Hello, friends. I welcome you all to this virtual learning online platform. For the last few periods, we have been talking about various elements of English grammar. More particularly, we are talking about tenses in English. And so far, we discussed in detail about the use of simple tenses, progressive tenses. And today, I would like to deal with the perfect tense, that is the perfect tense. While discussing about all these, I have adopted a little bit different approach. Once I start discussing about simple tense, I discussed simple present, simple past and simple future. Likewise, when I discussed about the progressive tense, I talked about present continuous, past continuous and future continuous. Now in this class, I am going to talk about the use of perfect tenses. That is, I will focus on present perfect tense, past perfect tense and future perfect tense. So let us proceed with the use of perfect tense in English. So students, now I'm going to talk about the use of perfect tense in English. When I say perfect tense in English, I have a holistic approach. I will discuss about present perfect tense, then past perfect tense, followed by future perfect tense. So let us look at the first one here. That is the use of present perfect tense. In our day to day life, we do come across a number of situations and we need to express ourselves depending on the requirement of the situation. So whenever you look at this particular area, that is the use of present perfect tense, you will find that we use present perfect tense in order to describe an action or a situation that has already started in the past but that is still continued in the present. See the kind of tense that we are going to talk about. I hope you got my point. You have an action or a situation that has already started in the past, but the action did not complete in the past. If at all the action would have completed in the past, you would have called it a past tense. Okay. But that is not the case here. Here, you have an action or a situation that already started in the past, but that is continued till present. And that's why we use this kind of tense to express or describe this kind of situation. We use the present perfect tense while you know, talking about an action performed during a period that has not yet finished. It means it started in the past and continued up till now in the present time. We also use present perfect tense for describing a repeated action in an unspecified period between the past and present. Right. 
so these are the different uses of present perfect tense in english let us try to understand with the help of a few examples here okay. let us look at these sentences on your screen the first sentence indicates that gayatri has lived all her life in mumbai it means she started living her life in some point of time in the past and even today right now if you try to find out you will realize that now also gayatri is living over there in mumbai it means the action of living in mumbai started in some point of time in the past that is continued for long because it is clearly indicated here gayatri has lived all her life in mumbai so whatever life she lived till date maybe 5 years 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years whatever that is not specified but since she started living in mumbai and till date it is also possible that right from her birth till date she has been living over there in mumbai so gayatri is a third person singular number functioning as the subject of the sentence has lived this is the verb phrase has and have both are used in present tense had is used in the past tense so right now we are talking about the present perfect tense so here you have a subject plus have or has plus v3 v3 means the past participle of the base form okay and then the remaining words as applicable it may be an object or adverbial or a complement whatever it may be so here you have gayatri third person singular number feminine gender functioning as the subject of the sentence has lived is the verb phrase here has is used because gayatri is third person singular number suppose i would have been using i there then i would have said i have lived all my life in hyderabad likewise probably i would have said if at all i am using i or we then i would have gone for have if at all you are using they also you would have gone for have but here gayatri is third person singular number that's why has is to be used so gayatri has lived all her life in mumbai has lived is the verb phrase how do you identify the tense here you identify the tense here with the help of the analysis of the verb phrase so has lived is a verb phrase has is a primary auxiliary especially to have work okay and live is the base form l i v e t lived is the past participle that is v3 form of the base form live right so this is how is the sentence over here now look at the another sentence we have written three articles till date maybe somebody has given you an assignment of writing an article or writing you know different articles on different topics and then you say that so we have written three articles till date till date means as of now okay whatever day is today or whatever date is today till date you completed or you have written three articles means the action of writing articles started in some point of time in the past that is not specified here but it is for sure that the action of writing article started in the past and it is you know continued till now and that's why the author or the speaker of the sentence that is we which is the plural form okay i we i is a singular form of the first person and we is the plural form of the first person so we is the plural subject here that's why we have used have here as an auxiliary or the primary auxiliary or to have auxiliary written is a v3 that is past participle of the base form write to write is the infinitive form write is the base form write wrote written so here we have used the third 
that is the past participle form of the verb so we have written three articles till date okay how many articles till sorry three articles how till date means as of now so the action of writing the article started in the past that is continued for some time and now in the present time okay till date we completed three it means maybe you are going to write a few more so the subject is we which is the first person plural number and then you have have written functioning as the verb phrase of the sentence how do you identify the tense here have has had these are the two have verbs and have and has are called in the present form had is called in the past form so since we have used have here so it is in the present form and another thing is written that is the third form of write so this v3 is used means this is the present perfect tense right switch over to the third sentence here he has worked here for long see the action of working here started in some point of time in the past and that is for a long period of time he worked for and of course even now till date the action of working for the institution or some some sort of organization is continued that's why it is said he has worked here for long so long durata duration of time is spent by him in order to work in this particular firm so here you have third person singular number he functioning as the subject has a work is the verb phrase already i discussed about it when to use have and when to use has so since the subject is third person singular number has is used work is the base form worked is the past form and past participle but since we have used has here so w o r k a d is to be called as v3 that is the past participle of the base form work so here you have this this kind of sentence that is he has worked here for long let us look at the fourth sentence we have finished our homework the teacher has an assigned some homework and of course we are expected to finish it off within time and now here the speakers of the sentence maybe a few students they are proclaiming that we have finished our homework right so v is the plural form first person have finished is the verb phrase our homework of course it is an object third element in the sentence but our focus will be on the verb phrase here since uh, first person plural number is working as the subject v that's why we have used have here and finish is the base form finished is the v3 that is past participle form of the verb so we have used it accordingly now you have the fifth sentence on your screen the manager has forgotten his folder see here manager probably might have come to some spot or some place maybe in the director's office for discussions or meeting and what happened the manager has forgotten his folder file whatever that he carried over there so the subject of the sentence is the manager third person singular number has forgotten is the verb phrase of the sentence since the third person singular number manager is functioning as subject we have used has here and forgotten is the past participle form of the word forget forget forgot forgotten so here you have has forgotten which is the you know verb phrase over here and of course uh, the third person singular number is functioning as the subject that's why we have used has here if at all the plural uh, you know subject is there then probably we would have gone for have and this is how this this kind of sentence is uh, ex expressed like this that is the manager has forgotten his folder okay his folder is the third element here that is the also the object of the sentence right so now let us switch over to the another type that is the use of past perfect tense in english generally we use the past perfect tense in order to refer to a time earlier than before now 
because the action started in the past completed in the past we use the past perfect tense in order to make it clear that one event happened before okay that is the distant past and completed later that is the nearer past okay so you have this sort of combination there and this sort of uh, expression is meant let us look at a few sentences here you will get some clarity kavita had met the ceo before the meeting now the statement itself will be very clear enough that kavita met the ceo first later on the meeting was held see the sentence here kavita had met the ceo before the meeting so which is the distant past meeting the ceo is the action which took place first that is the distant past and what happened later the meeting was conducted later okay so here you need to understand that kind of thing so kavita had met kavita is the third person singular number had met okay had already i told you whenever you go for the past perfect tense you should be constantly using had only only in the case of present tense you have has and have okay have and has you need to use it in association with the form of the subject but there is no issue like this in the past perfect tense whatever may be the form of the subject don't bother about it constantly had will be there that is for sure followed by v3 v3 means past participle of the verb okay see here meet met met okay meet m e e t meet is the base form met is the v2 past form and if you are using it after have has had that is the past participle is required m e t met okay so here we have kavita functioning as the subject of the sentence third person singular number since we are talking about the past perfect tense so we will constantly use had here and met is the v3 that is the past participle of the verb meet the ceo before the meeting so here this kind of expression is made and that is all clear about it. then you have the second sentence on the screen the train had left by the time he got to the station now you tell me which is the action that took place first the train already left the station that started first that happened first and then he he reached to the station because he got late to the station and that's why the train which was running on time already left the station so the distant past is the departure of the train the near past is the arrival of the person on the station on the platform so these are the things that you need to really understand in the respect of uh, past perfect tense so you have the train third person singular number you can use it for the train had left is the you know verb phrase of the sentence had already i told you you need to constantly use in the past perfect tense leave left left L E A V E leave is the base form. L E F T past form. L E F T past participle. Since we are using past perfect tense here, so we need the past participle form. So we have used it. Had left. Okay. So the sentence is the train had left by the time he got to the station. It means he got late to the station, and before he reached out to the platform, the train has already left. so this is how is the actual you know description over here then you have the third sentence she had written the the email before he apologized maybe there was an issue between the two that she and he there was an issue so she had already replied to the person via email you know before he really apologized probably he might have done something wrong which was unprofessional so before he make his apology to her okay before he really replied to her she had already written an email to the person and that is how this sentence is 
she had written the email before he apologized so writing email took place in the distant past the near past is his apology okay so probably he might have apologized later but the action of writing an email took place first so that is the distant past for us so distant past is expressed in the past perfect tense and the near past is expressed in the simple past tense and already you have got a couple of examples of this kind so you have third person singular number she functioning as the subject had written is a verb phrase had as i told you usually used in the past perfect tense and the v3 of the base form that is write wrote written so we have used written here because we need the third form of the base word right rish had gone to the theater but he did not get the ticket probably krish might have gone to the theater in order to watch a movie or in order to you know enjoy a drama or a play which was organized there in the theater but unfortunately he did not get the ticket right so the see here the distant past and the near past right he had gone to the theater so going to the theater took place first and once he reached out there to the theater he did not get any ticket so he had to come back so this is how you have the combination of the distant past and the near past so krish is a third person singular number you can use he also so noun you know pronoun is a word we use the instead of a noun like that you can make it krish is a third person singular number had gone is the verb phrase had as usually required in the past perfect tense and go went gone so we have used gone here because the third uh, form of the verb is required here so krish had gone to the theater to the theater is the adverbial third element of the sentence okay so here this kind of sentence is provided let us look at the fifth sentence the last sentence on the screen uh, he had completed 20 years of service in the private sector so you know he, he had a long experience as such and he had completed 20 years of service in the private sector so the beginning of doing a service started before 20 years up till now 20 years are complete maybe he is positive for or optimistic for the government job or is any other job as well that he wanted but till now he completed 20 years of service in the private sector so here you have third person singular number he functioning as the subject had completed is the verb phrase had as usual as required in the past perfect tense already i discussed about it completed is the v3 of the base form complete complete completed completed so v3 we have adopted or used here and this is how this sentence is also you know in the past perfect tense now i will switch over to the third type that is the use of future perfect tense in english we use future perfect tense in order to refer to a completed action in the future mind it well you need to be very specific right present is related to the present time now right past is related to something that happened in the past has no concern with the present and future is always uncertain i told you for number of times and that will happen in future and will be completed in future so here you have the use of future tense and generally we use future tense or future perfect tense in particular in order to refer to a completed action in the future when we project ourselves forward into the future and looking back at an action that will be completed sometime later than now so that also you can you know do here in this context and finally you can say that it is the most oftenly used with a time expression because unless you provide some time context probably you will not be able to understand it if at all you don't mention time context also still you can make the successful expression because it will give you certain indications that this is all going to happen in the future right but it is always you know uncertain whenever you talk about the future future is always uncertain so let us look at the few sentences here 
she will have finished this autobiography next month next year or next week however you want to say you can you know include the time context here okay she will have finished this autobiography so she started writing her autobiography the action of writing autobiography started long back maybe in the past that is you know some part is completed in the past some part she is doing now but now she is on the verge of finishing the autobiography then you can anticipate and say that she will have finished this autobiography by next sunday only a few pages are to be you know written and that is the only left over part she is giving the finishing touch to her autobiography and that's why you can say like this she will have finished this autobiography by diwali this year okay maybe she is writing the last part of her autobiography maybe in another 2 3 months or so she will complete that so she is a third person singular number okay in in the respect of you, you know indicating future action you can use shall or will since the third person singular number is the subject will is used here will have finished this is the verb phrase mind it well shall and will is the future tense indicator once you find shall and will 101% that sentence is in future tense if you find have after shall and will it means that is the perfect form perfective aspect followed by v3 that is the third form of the verb past participle form of the verb means 101% the sentence is in future perfect tense okay shall or will plus have plus, plus v3 so i repeat shall or will plus have plus v3 so if you find this kind of structure there of the verb phrase definitely this is going to be a sentence in the future perfect tense so the sentence is she will have finished this autobiography by next sunday by next month by next year by the upcoming diwali like this you can say next sentence the students will have studied the english tenses see i have been teaching you english tenses for the last one week or so maybe another couple of periods i will you know engage on the same topic so i can assume that the students will have studied the english tenses by next week okay so next week is yet to come okay that is the time related to the future that is yet to come but i can assume that the students which is the plural form okay third person plural number you can say they for the students so they the students will have studied will have studied is the verb phrase will future tense indicator have perfective aspect studied v3 of the base form study likewise the sentence goes they will have cooked dinner okay so we don't know who are they but of course more than one that's why we used it they maybe we are talking about a family and they will have cooked the dinner by 8 o'clock in the evening so now it is morning time for all of us and if at all you generally look at the people they do prepare their dinner by 8 o'clock or so or 9 o'clock or so and then they have right so you can say like this they will have cooked dinner by 8 o'clock in the evening so means in the evening by 8 o'clock they will have prepared or they will have prepared their dinner and later they will have it they will eat it so they is the third person plural number will have cooked is the verb phrase here shall and will future tense indicator have perfective aspect and cooked is the v3 of the base form cook then the fourth sentence company employees will have met the villagers probably company might have come up with a proposal for the villagers they must be having some agricultural plan or else an offer to the villagers and that's why the sentence is like this company employees will have met the villagers the company employees third person plural number will have met the verb phrase 
and the villagers is of course the third element object of the sentence so will have met will is the future tense indicator have is the perfective aspect met is the v3 of meet meet met met okay so this is how this sentence is formed in the future perfect tense and finally you have the last sentence on the screen they will have left germany it means now you know they are in germany but since they are planned to come back to their motherland or native country so by this time next week you know next week they will have left germany it means now they are there in germany but next week by the same day probably they might have or they will have left germany in order to come back to the native country so they is the third person plural number will have left is the verb phrase here shall and will already i told future tense indicator have perfective aspect left is the v3 of or past past participle form of the verb leave l e a v e leave left left okay so this is how is the sentence formation for all these you know types as i discussed 